I'm Ed Bott. And I'm Janelle Crothers. And we've been talking today about a variety of tools that are mostly part of Windows 10. Things like File Explorer and Registry Editor and Task Manager. Uh, in this module, we're going to take a slightly different tack. We're going to look at some, some tools and utilities that are they're officially from Microsoft. They didn't start out that way. This internal suite and the diagnostic and recovery tool set section of the art um, were originally from a company called Internals Software. Winternals was purchased 10 years ago. And uh, their its key employees, Marcus Rich and Bryce Kelly, work for Microsoft. They brought along the Sys Internal Suite uh, and a program called Emergency. I think. Uh, uh, but that became Dart. And uh, the amazing thing about about these tools is that you know often as part of an acquisition, uh, tools like these will disappear. Um, this, in fact, this is not the case. Uh, Mark ha has continued to develop the Sys Internals tools um, over the past 10 years uh, and has even added some. Um, and they are available for free download from sysinternals.com. Uh, and they include three incredibly powerful replacements for built-in Windows tools. Auto Runs, which we're going to talk about today, is uh, the uh, a more powerful version of the startup tab from Task Manager? Process Explorer uh, gives you a view of running tasks that is also more powerful than Task Manager, and Process Monitor is a way of capturing information about what's going on throughout your system: the registry, the file system, the network, and everything, so that you can uh, diagnose really, really pesky problems. Uh, now, the Diagnostics and Recovery Toolset is not free. It is a benefit for volume licensed customers who have software assurance. Um, and so it's part of MDOP, yes. part of the Microsoft Desktop Optimization Pack. Um, and its signature tool, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, is, uh, is one called Crash Analyzer, which uh, when, when you have a piece of hardware or a piece of software, something like a file system driver that causes stop errors, the blue screen of death, Crash Analyzer allows you to take the memory dump files that it creates and figure out what the cause is. So these are great tools. Uh, technically, they're not part of Windows 10, but for anybody who's an IT pro or a support professional, they should be uh, in your toolkit. There are three ways to get the Sys Internals tools. You can download the individual utilities uh, one at a time if you want. There's, uh, you just go to sysinternals.com. You can look at a categorized list, uh, or you can just go through a big master list and download the ones that you want. Um, you can use the live.sysinternals.com service, which uh, looks like this. Type live.sysinternals.com, and it takes you to a web page where uh, all of the tools are listed in alphabetical order. You scroll through, find the one that you want, uh, click it, and it runs. Um, and the good thing about live.sysinternals.com is you know you've always got the most recent version. And because these tools are still being updated regularly, um, if you download them, uh, you know you need to check occasionally and make sure that that there hasn't been a replacement a new version that's added significant features and capabilities. And finally, you can download a zip file of the entire sysinternals suite and, uh, and put it in a directory of your choosing and, uh, and, and then run the, run the utilities directly from there. Uh, you can create shortcuts to them. You can pin them to your start, uh, your start menu. You can pin them to the taskbar, uh, you know, your, your preference. Uh, one thing about most of the Sys Internals tools is that you can run them from your regular user account without uh, elevating. Uh, but when you try to do something that is potentially destructive, like uh, delete a, an auto run program, uh, you'll be prompted to run it as an administrator. So if you're planning to, 
to uh, do a bunch of work with one of these tools, you might want to consider running it as an administrator in the first place. Choose the run as administrator option. But let's start with, uh, let's start with auto runs. I'm going to do this in a virtual machine here. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you what live.sysinternals, this is the sysinternals suite um, homepage. Uh, very nice, clean thing. You can see the top 10 downloads uh, here. And you can download the, the entire sysinternals suite, which I've already done. Um, but I'm just going to go over here and create a new tab and go live.sysinternals.com. And there we are. And if I click auto runs, run, I have to accept a license agreement. And I am now running this incredibly powerful utility. Uh, let's, go, let's go back and talk a little bit about, let me see if we got, so like I said, it's more powerful than the startup tab in Task Manager. Um, one of the things that it does, you know, Task Manager shows you programs that are running, Pro, uh, either things that uh, decide that they're going to uh, start themselves up in the interest of making your system run faster and appearing that they can start a few milliseconds faster. Uh, that can sometimes have an impact on your system startup time. Uh, and so, you know, you want to, you want to prune those if they're not really necessary. But one of the key things that auto runs can do that the startup tab in task manager can't is it lists file explorer shell extensions. So if you have some program that's added a bunch of stuff to the right click menu in file explorer, you can use auto runs to make those entries go away. Say, I don't, I'm not going to use them. You make them go away. You can also permanently remove an auto start entry. And that's something that you can't do in, um, in task manager. Uh, in task manager, you can only disable uh, an, an auto start program. You can't permanently remove it. I think you have to go digging through the registry. Permanently remove You've it. got to figure out where it is. Now, the nice thing, uh, w when you open auto runs, and I'll, we'll look a little more closely at this running live, but you'll notice there's some color coding in here. Uh, the yellow coding means that uh, there's some there's an auto start entry that doesn't have an associated that where the file that it points to doesn't exist. Um, you might want to consider deleting that uh, if you're a neat freak. Although I don't recommend doing that just um, just automatically because there might be some reason why it's there. It might that file might be created later when you take advantage of some feature in a program. So be careful about doing that. Uh, the pink entries here mean that there is an auto start program that doesn't have information from the publisher associated with it. So there's no description uh, of the program and there's no publisher name. But it's as we'll see, it, it might be questionable. It might, uh, it might just be uh, a, a DLL of some sort. And as we're going to see in a demo, um, there's a way to uh, get that information if you need it. Uh, I want to point out one little trick here when you're using auto runs because the, the, the list of entries can be overwhelming. There's an option here on the options menu called hide Microsoft entries. And so that will hide all of the things that Windows loads automatically. And in many cases that Office loads automatically. Uh, so you can get them out and you can just focus on the third party programs. Finally, um, and this is true of all of the sysinternals tools, uh, you can right click on any entry in these things and uh, you have options that will let you investigate that process in extreme detail. And this is really, really good for uh, trying to figure out what a suspicious program is. Is it malware? Is it adware? Um, or is it, is it, oh, that's a program that I installed. I just forgot that I did that. Uh, the little check boxes over here let you, um, you know, temporarily remove them from operation. So we'll go back to auto runs here, the full screen mode. And so, and so, yeah, like I said, if you look along the top, all of these different tabs show all of the different places where both Windows and third party programs can. Uh, can hide things. Sidebar gadgets, of course, don't exist in Windows 10, so you won't find things there. Um, but 
uh, you know, here's the everything list. And this is a very, very clean virtual machine, so you're not going to find stuff here. But on a, on a system that has lots of software installed on it, you know, this list can go on and on and on. Uh, now we've got one here. This is actually from Microsoft and it has a, a pink color coding. So we're not sure what it's all about. So one of the things that I could do here is I can verify that image. Say, well, it's not verified. And the reason is because this is a scheduled task. It's a script and it's not an executable file. So you can't check it against the, uh, against the description. But for anything else, you can right click and choose verify image and that will check it against the digital signature and you'll you'll be able to say okay this is a trustworthy program even if they didn't put the publisher's name on it the other thing that you can do with anything that you see in here is that you can check it against um, against virus total which is a an online service where you can upload suspicious files and then they will be checked against uh, as many as 57 different virus scanning engines. So if you're suspicious about a, uh, about a program, you would just say check virus total and it would upload it to the virus total service. And after uh, a couple minutes, after it's gone through the process of virus total, you will get a result here that will say, uh, hopefully it will say zero of 57, that there were no suspicious results recorded there. But that's auto runs at a glance. As I said, you could, uh, you know, you can, you can temporarily prevent a program from starting by clearing its checkbox here. So I say, I don't want OneDrive to load the next time I start up, I can do that. Or you can go into here, you wouldn't want to do this with OneDrive, of course, but uh, you can just delete it. And, uh, and when you delete it, it's gone. And the good thing is you don't have to search through the registry. You don't have to search through the file system and all the different folders where uh, programs can put things, you just um, you know you just delete it and uh, and it won't darken your door again. The next tool we're going to look at is Process Explorer. It is I like to describe it to people as when Task Manager isn't quite complicated enough. Task Manager is pretty beefy from the Ta previous task, mo module. There, Task so. Manager is pretty beefy, and Task Manager will cover most of the day in and day out troubleshooting tasks that you want to accomplish, Process Explorer does a lot. And again, this is the big gun that you haul out when you want to investigate suspicious activity or performance issues that where you just can't figure it out from Task Manager. And the killer feature in Process Explorer, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is one, and if you've ever watched Mark Rusinovich do a, a demo of Process Explorer, you'll see him use this. You can suspend a running process and suspending a running process is really great when you suspect that something is malware because most malware authors uh, are very adept at figuring out oh you killed that process in task manager and they have a way to respawn it but when you suspend it um, the, 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 the malware doesn't realize that it's no longer running and so it's a great way to, uh, to, to temporarily remove a suspicious process uh, without actually having to kill it. So then you can see if your functionality improves with that. that exactly. Suspended. And sometimes and, and sometimes with malware, you'll have side-by-side uh, -side processes that are actually watching out for each other. That's their, it's their job. So uh, if you use Task Manager to kill one process, the other process is, uh, is says, oh, they just killed that process, I'm going to restart it. Then you kill that one, and it... And the, other, and the one. other one restarts it. It's you know malware authors are are horrible human beings with uh, with tremendous uh, talent at making mayhem. making mayhem. And so the ability to suspend a process is uh, you know is is really useful in investigations like that. This is what Process Explorer looks like. And one thing that you'll notice is different from um, Task Manager is that child processes are listed under their parent. So in a lot of cases, uh, so if you have like a service host here, where, you know, if uh, in the previous module, we had to actually go into the services tab on task manager and sort by process ID to see what's under a particular service host instance. Here, 
this is all very neatly categorized for you in a hierarchy. You'll also find that there are a number of processes that are spawned under explorer.exe. And so, you know, you can see them in their, uh, in their correct hierarchy. The uh, properties dialog box for a running process from Process Explorer has a tremendous amount more information than you will see in uh, Task Manager as well. Uh, these tabs up here give you a, just a whole bunch of, of information. And you still have the option to kill a process, uh, but you can also bring it to the front, which is a cool thing. When you're trying to figure out what is this program, uh, you, you pull it up from the Process Explorer list, get its properties, and then you bring it to the front. And hopefully that gives you an idea of, of what exactly you're dealing with here. And finally, it has its own system information tab. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but um, you can press Control-I to bring this up or just uh, you know, choose the, the uh, menu option from Process Explorer and get a snapshot of performance. It's similar to what Task Manager does, but the, the graphs are, are bigger. And uh, it actually shows some stuff such as the, uh, the activity of your GPU that you can't get in Task Manager. So with that, let's do a quick, take a very, very quick look at um, Process Explorer. Okay, so normally you would use the run box to type the command for Process Explorer. And I know that's P-R-O-C-E-X-P, uh, but Windows cannot find PROCX. And the reason for that is because I put this in the folder in the sys internal suite folder, and that's not part of the system path. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to the system properties dialog box. You should be able to just type path in the search box, and you can get the same thing here. And we're going to get to environment variables, okay? And then we're going to go down here to path, and we're going to edit the path. And what you're seeing here is something that is completely new in Windows 10. It wasn't in Windows 8.1. It certainly wasn't in Windows 7. Um, before, you had to edit the path manually if you had programs that you wanted to add. Uh, this allows you to just, I'm going to add a new entry to the path here. So I just did that. I'm going to browse to the folder where I created, where I, where I uh, unzipped this internal suite files. I put them right there. That is now part of the path. Click OK, click OK. Now, if Fortune smiles, it runs. So now, so what I did was to add the folder where I had unzipped the sys internal suite uh, utilities into the system path. And as a result, I can now just type the name of any of the uh, utilities in a uh, command line or in the run box, and it will run as expected here. This is, if you, uh, let's maximize this to see it. Uh, there's that very, very busy, but information packed dialog box. You'll notice that the gray color indicates uh, programs that are suspended. Now, that doesn't mean they were voluntarily suspended. Uh, that, what that means typically is that these are Windows Store apps that have been running, but are now running in the background and don't need, uh, don't need to be taking up system resources. So they're behaving properly. If we were to bring them to the foreground, they would, um, they would start running again. But I'll point out up here, uh, you've got the, the CPU uh, memory graphs, and, uh, and if there were any disk I.O., that would be showing up here as well. This is an, uh, an, an interesting option here, this little bullseye. Uh, I'm going to go back to Microsoft Edge here and just open that. And I'm going to pull this over here. And, and, that, and you pull that little bullseye over the window, and it will find the matching process in the Process Explorer window. Uh, as with everything, you can kill a process. You can kill the entire process tree. If something's not working, you can restart it. And the nice thing here is, unlike in Task Manager, where Restart only works with File Explorer, uh, Restart works with any process here. So if you have a, a process that isn't running properly, you can restart it here. That is a very, very quick look 
at uh, at Process Explorer. And finally, the third of the big three sysinternals uh, utilities is Process Monitor, affectionately known as ProcMon. It, it tracks activity involving the file system, the network the registry, and more. Uh, you can save all of this information. It's really handy for, trying, for figuring out uh, when something's happening, it's writing information to the registry, but where in the right. registry is it going? Um, and as with things like Event Viewer, you can use filters to narrow down a saved trace and figure out where it goes. So let me just show you what Process Monitor looks like. Um, and again, because we've already set up the path, should be able to type procmon, and there it goes. And as you can see, this is keeping, uh, you know, this, this little window is filling up. You can watch uh, down here in the status bar and see, I think I opened it about five seconds ago, and we're up to almost 200,000 events that it has logged uh, so far. Uh, now, one of the, so, so one of the main things that you want to be able to do with this to, to narrow things down is, you know, let's go back to Edge. And let's just have it, let's just have it do something. Okay. So now we can go in here and we can filter. Uh, and see here, you can create a filter manually that will include or exclude uh, things so that your log file, your trace file shows only the information that you're looking for. But even easier, go down and find some activity from a process that you're investigating and find let's just let's just look at uh, at Florida it moves so fast it captures so much information that it's difficult to get it to to uh, stand still for even a second uh, we're gonna, we're gonna find something here and demonstrate well let's do this Let's say I want to find every time it opens a key. Didn't work because there aren't, because that, because it, it didn't succeed at that operation. So it's looking for a key and that didn't succeed. So we'll find uh, sorts, of, sorts of activity. And this is why you want to use filters. Right, yes. Here we go. Here's one that was a success. So we're going to uh, we're going to include this host. Then we're going to we're going to include anything that was successful. So there, we've just gotten rid of all those unsuccessful uh, attempts to open a registry key, and now we are looking only at operations where that particular instance of service host was uh, successfully able to open a, uh, a registry. So that, and you can continue doing that. Uh, you can save filters and uh, highlight information that's in a, in a trace file. Really use this powerful diagnostic tool, not something that you're going to master the first time that you use it, but definitely something that you should have in your toolkit. Okay, let's look at diagnostics and recovery tool set now. Dart. Okay. Dart. Dart, as I mentioned, is part of MDOP. Um, and and Dart, Dart is, uh, you create emergency recovery media. You carry it around with you and you, uh, you use it when a system is having problems. You can boot from that media and you can fix problems with that system. Really like having a toolkit in your back pocket. It really is. Um, it takes a little bit of work to build a Dart recovery image. Um, you have to you have to download some extra tools for it. Part of the Microsoft SDK, uh, you need to uh, you need the uh, the debugger, the Windows debugger tools uh, need to be part of this also. I have the full instructions in the ebook, um, but when you're done. Uh, this is the, 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 the wizard, and you can choose which tools that you want on there. But you basically run the wizard, and when you're done and you boot, you get this Microsoft Diagnostics and Recovery Toolset option, 
in the uh, in the startup menu. So you, you you boot from your recovery media, and you get a menu that looks like this. I want to show you but I consider the, the, the best feature of all in this, which is Crash Analyzer. I mentioned, you know, if you have a blue screen of death, you really need to figure out why it happened. So that's when you fire up Crash Analyzer. Open it like this. And it is a wizard. Let's get rid of the rest of that stuff. Get that out of the way. And so what you have to do is, first of all, you have to have the Microsoft debugging tools installed. I've already done that on this system. If you didn't, you could just follow this link and get them. You have to download the symbols files. Uh, or uh, already that, I'm pretty sure. We could here. Symbols. Okay. They're there. If you didn't have those, you could just download them directly. Then we're going to find the crash dump file. Now what's interesting here is that uh, this crash dump file doesn't have to be from the system that you're working on. You can copy this file from the system that's having the problem and copy it to the file where you want to do the analysis where, where Dart is running. Crash Analyzer runs without having to start from the emergency recovery disk. Um, we're going to open that file, and as long as the symbols match the version of Windows that was on that system, it should be able to give us some information. So this is uh, this is running now. It's uh, basically it's putting the information from the memory dump file uh, into the debugger and checking them against the symbols. And it says the driver probably at fault. Power dependency coordinator driver PDC dot sys. Great, that's helpful. That Well, <laughs> as it turns out, it actually is helpful because I was able to go search for that information and I discovered that this is a fairly common problem uh, and you can click the details thing here. You can get uh, some really interesting information about the crash message itself. And I went and looked for that and I discovered that I had been running a beta security program that beta security program was uh, was conflicting with the power management features on this computer. So every time this computer tried to wake up from sleep, uh, the the uh, security software was causing it to crash. So I uninstalled that beta release, and the crashes stopped. So it was a, it was actually a uh, a great crash analyzer success story. Wow. And and that, in a nutshell, is sysinternal suite and Dart. We are uh, 